Hi, everyone. My name is Richard Sirota. I'm looking forward to spending a few minutes with you today talking about platform engineering and the cloud IDP, this evolution of how we might think about platform engineering. I've been doing this for a while, back years ago with Pivotal and Cloud Foundry, even 10 years ago. We were looking at platforms and how do small teams of talented platform engineers support hundreds or thousands of devs on a shared platform. So just excited to talk to you today about what we think is maybe the next big step for how we can bring platform engineering to lots of different folks. Now, I don't know if you watch some of these cooking shows, they're pretty wild, but you know, sometimes this can remind me a lot of how a lot of internal technical teams work. They're all individually running their own environments. They're doing their own thing. There's a beautiful craziness to it all, but it's not at all organized and it's a bit chaotic. And so as we look at platform engineering and internal development platforms, we think about ways that we can actually still produce great things, but we can do th things with a consistency and a speed that's possible by having shared platforms. And so when you look at what we see in common IDPs, internal development platforms, you see a handful of things. You see configuration management. How do you create consistency across a set of infrastructure and applications and things like that? How do you have infrastructure orchestration? How do you commonly provision new environments, new locations, new workloads, new apps, whatever it is? Again, this matters a lot too now as we think about AI workloads and a whole new set of people that we want working in a platform sense. Environment management, how do we keep that environment safe and healthy, understand what's going on there? What do we do with deployments? How do we make sure that folks have a common way that they can deploy to different runtimes for security purposes, for consistency purposes, reliability? all sorts of things where a good IDP makes sure that that's possible. And of course, how do we think about role-based access? How do these environments support the right level of self-service, the right automation that's not even happening, happening with any human intervention? And so you need to have a sophisticated, thoughtful approach to these sorts of things to have a strong IDP. Now there's pains with this, right? This isn't perfect or else we'd have nothing to talk about. So instead, how do we look at some of the things that are we can struggle with? There's a lot of tools. Like on one hand, that's amazing. You can do all sorts of things with open source, commercial, individual components, multi-component stacks. It's awesome, but it does mean it's a lot. And it means there's a ton of sprawl and probably no two platforms look alike. And there's a high integration cost to that. Self-service is tricky. There's been some recent data I have seen that show how many developers are struggling with just the self-service tooling available to them. So even though we might be trying our best to deliver platforms, most of our actual users of these platforms aren't thrilled with them. It's okay, but they're not really happy with the, the number of manual things that still have to come in or the, the sort of breadth of service they have available. We know that, that we're not in the perfect end state yet. Again, connecting these stacks. There are very few turnkey things in platform engineering. It's a lot of connect this, connect that, connect this. Amazing, that's on you though, as a user and as a platform engineer. And so trying to connect all that, frankly, upgrade it all. What happens when this dependency breaks this, 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 and this? It's a lot. And so it's great when we assemble these things, but then we take in a very high cost of integration, both actual cost, keeping this up to date, but even just the labor costs and things like that. And so something I, I coined a couple of years ago is this idea, instead of shifting left, shifting left's awesome, I guess, if you want to move security tasks and things earlier in the dev process, that makes sense. But shift left often seem to be shorthand for, let's have the devs do it all. Let's have them understand infrastructure engineering. Let's have them understand everything about databases, firewalls. Let's have them do work even in ML engineering. Let's just have devs do more stuff. I think that's not great. And so should we be shifting down? Should we, instead of shifting everything left to developers, should we be shifting it down to the platforms? We have smarter platforms, instead of assuming we have to have absolutely just genius developers that, 50 different dimensions, it's unfair. You can't do all that. Instead, we should be shifting down to platforms and saying, hey, the platform should have all these quality attributes, security things, take care of all of this automation. Why am I asking even humans to do it, let alone developers? Let's just have platforms be smarter. So we think about this approach of can we shift down and give developers more? And so when we think of a good IDP, even at Google, but frankly, all of us, as we think about what does it mean to take all this into account and have a good platform. Well, we've all said this, I think, in this in this business for a while, but treating this as a product, it's a real thing, right? Treating your platform like a product where you have product managers, where you think about your users as developers, 
where you have a real backlog and upgrade process, not just set it and forget it, but a real platform strategy where you are constantly iterating and learning and kept going from a minimum viable platform up to something bigger when the demand comes. I love this, uh, this term, uh, the folks at Redmonk had coined this a while back, I just use it all the time, but I love the idea of opinionated but extensible. Not just, hey, you can do everything. How about, here's a good way to do things, and if you need to do different things, great. But come in opinionated. These platforms should have golden paths. They should have lit paths, easier ways to do 80, 20 things. And when you want to do something a little out of the ordinary, fine, no big deal. But we shouldn't just say, like, black, here's a bunch of components, do your thing. That's just so much work on everybody. Let's lower the cognitive load. Using open APIs, look, proprietary is not going to play great here. How do you make sure that there is that extensibility? If everything is very proprietary, then it's going to be hard to extend it. So how do you take advantage of fairly standard things where you can? I don't know. I think the number one job of most platform engineering teams isn't to build an amazing platform because we've all probably in our careers built it and hope they will come and then they didn't come because we just built something amazing on paper, even in reality, that didn't meet the need. So I think our number one goal with a platform, is it actually useful to our audience? Is it reducing their cognitive load? Can we bring in people of different skill levels, people who don't know every aspect of everything? And can they be successful? If they can, success. We've built a platform that matters. If we have not, then I don't know what we've built. We've built something that's really cool for the resume. Is it hyper automated? We've all seen cases where that last mile hasn't gotten automated. So you're not automated. Like if you've just automated up to like that last step, but then there's still a bunch of human interaction here to get something deployed or upgraded, it didn't kind of matter. You did the rest of it. So is everything automated? Can you get from check in to production? Can you do mitigation, scaling? Can you do all sorts of things through automation? I think you have to. Otherwise, you're never going to have small, tight platform teams that can support hundreds or thousands of devs, you're going to have these 100, 200 person platform teams, which I think is an anti-pattern. And then really, does a good IDP enforce standards and practices? Is this helping you do the right thing? Is it easier to do the right thing on your platform? If the answer is no, then you haven't succeeded, I don't think, right? I mean, the goal has to be that we've not just given you a platform, but yet you have to use it in anger, or it's just so much work to do the right thing. A good platform means we have made it easy to do the right thing. You have actually built fans of your platform. And so, but that's meaning, can I still enforce all these standards and practices, but do it in a way that's greased, that's easy for people to do successfully. So it's something we've been thinking about at Google is a cloud IDP. Instead of just assembling the components, which you can do in the cloud, I can run a Kubernetes stack and put the full open stack of things on there. And that's amazing. Live your life. It's great. For a lot of folks, it's like, wow, can I just get the IDP and maybe have it purposely integrated? And so we think about this as, can we build something complete? Can this not just be one piece of the stack? Maybe just the templates and registry or just some of the you know, components I have for provisioning or operations and observability. Can we think completely about this? Can this be integrated on purpose? Frankly, that's going to be a differentiator. And in the open world, and when you choose best of breed, you can always choose the best components. And something that's going to be hyper integrated, its value is probably on being integrated, not just being on the best of everything. So our goal, of course, with the cloud IDP is, can this be integrated? Is that the value prop that this thing knows well about this thing that feeds this thing? We'll talk about that more. I think this is the biggest transformation, is the public cloud up until now has been piles of infrastructure, isn't it? It's, it's roles, it's storage buckets, it's a VM, it's a Kubernetes cluster, it's a database, it's a pub or a messaging substrate, it's all these different infrastructure components, which maybe you collect with tags and other ways to try to group them together into an app construct, but you're fighting it, like it's not natural. And so what we're trying to do with a cloud IDP is can we put an app centric lens on the cloud for the first time? I think the answer is yes. So if you can do this and all of a sudden the app becomes a security boundary, the app becomes a spin up sort of structure. The app becomes a deployment artifact. And so that gets pretty exciting when all of a sudden the infrastructure becomes in service of the app, which is always is. But the public cloud has typically elevated the infrastructure to the primary. Let's fight back against that. And so when we think of the cloud IDP, we think of this stack that we've put together where you've got 
layers here. We'll talk about a couple of them. But the, the key is, of course, is this one IDP? Is this one thing that can serve us, that can serve customers, partners? Can this be all sorts of runtimes? A lot of IDPs I've seen are Kubernetes-centric, maybe even just VM-centric. But your environment's more rich than that. And so a good IDP should, shouldn't should care if you have Kate's clusters, if you have serverless functions, you have VMs, you've got relational, non-relational, load balancers, whatever. It should pull it all together. And so I love the fact that we're focusing on all the runtimes at the same time. Hey, use open source industry standards. Make sure it's easy to use things that you're already familiar with. Pull it together again into a platform. The goal is I'm trying to help developers deliver software better and run it at lower cost. And we do this with incorporating best practices and policy. And so really made up of just a couple of layers here. You've got the core application platform. App Hub is a really interesting service that acts as an app registry. Put together all these different infrastructure components into an app definition, which is really powerful. So now I can troubleshoot the app. I can manage the app. I can do all sorts of things there. And so App Hub, important component to look at there. But you know, at the same time, managing all the assets, this is just the way Google has been building for the last couple of years to automatically be able to detect all the different services and help you then group those into applications to make it easier for you. Today, the cloud's a project view. It's an infrastructure view. It's a bunch of things you have to group together. And so it's on you to figure out what are all these different components? How do they come together? Instead, we're thinking about auto-discovered resources that you group into applications, and then you can manage as a unit. I think that's a big deal. I think that's a big rethinking of public cloud, and more importantly, a rethinking of how we do an integrated application platform. And so all of this comes together really nicely, makes life easier for teams building platforms. At the same time then, how do I take all that and put into that layer what we have called Cloud Hub, which is now free to users to take advantage of, whether I wanna manage What's going on with the app? How should I optimize the app? What is the cost of the app? How do I do maintenance of the app? Again, all of a sudden you elevate the application to its proper role in the platform because the platform now knows how to pull it all together. So you've got runtimes. Again, trying to think about this across runtimes and all connected. The foundation of security and automation of permissions, really, really important here. That security layer. How do I take advantage of proper identity management authentication, at the same time, security checks and vulnerability checks and things like that. But then the top layer, what am I giving to devs, right? Some of this is, should be invisible to a developer. It just kind of, it's, it's how it works, right? It's just the sweet part of the platform that just happens to, to function properly. What's the self-service experience? And so we're shipping things like Application Design Center. This gives it uh, a visual form to actually design or consume templates that can be full applications with couple of load balancers, VM, serverless, databases, hub subtopics, all these sorts of things. Store these as templates, share them as templates. They're aware of the environment. I can then deploy to that right to the runtimes and all of the database services, all that best practices baked in. So I have this sort of front end experience that works through the entire stack. I think this is really, really powerful when again, you're, you're doing things that are baking in best practices with using these platforms. I think there's a better way here. So, you know, as I, I kind of wrap this up, I think the cloud IDP concept of saying, hey, look, if you're in Google Cloud, our goal is to stretch this to other clouds as well and other environments over time. But is there a way to intentionally integrate the sort of self-service experience, the automation, even that application design center spits out Terraform, so standard interfaces, common security structure, substrate where these sort of services are auto-discovered and registered and grouped into services, all of this on a solid foundation that scales globally. You can build that, we can build that, whatever the right strategy is, I think this idea of let's first shift down. Let's, let's make our goal to put more of this capability into our platforms and less into the requirements of a developer. Because honestly, it either won't happen, it won't happen consistently, or it's just gonna slow everything down. So let's have smarter platforms. Let's shift down, make this easier. Yeah, hopefully over time, hey, hopefully you build this with us. So you build this in some way, the other clouds may follow our lead on this as well. But there's a time to build and there's a time to integrate your own stack. And sometimes there's a lot of value in saying, hey, our differentiator won't be in running our own stack. It's gonna be using something more purposely integrated. So now we can ship differentiated software. Whatever you do, just make sure your platforms are smarter, hopefully more integrated. And then you can do some pretty magical things.
So thanks for spending some of these uh, few minutes with me here at the event. And thank you for listening. And, and hopefully, if you have any questions, ping me on LinkedIn or on Twitter at, at rsroder. Thanks for giving me your time. Bye-bye.